All right, in this video, I want to do a demonstration of a really cool new tool I've been developing. This is called the Cylindraw. It's a two and a half axis CNC plotter made specifically for cylinders. Works on things as small as a shot glass, and this one I've drawn on, and it works on things as large as water bottles, and this one I've engraved on. You can do multicolors like this. You can work on multiple materials in multiple mediums. It's a really versatile tool as far as what it will hold and what it can do to that. But more than that, I've put a lot of effort into developing the software for this tool to make it really easy to use. Because I think I think having cool, versatile hardware is, is valuable, but by itself, it's just... Uh, uh, in a, an inert brick without good software to go along with it. Uh, so let's see. I'm going to do a demonstration of drawing uh, this little guy. I'm going to show you what goes into making that because I think it's really easy. And I think you will too. I put it in like that. Screw it in. This is sprung so I can adjust the compression. Lock that in. This chuck spins to adjust for different cylinder diameters put it in i'm gonna grip it like that give it a test oh yeah that's not going anywhere and then this is an interesting feature here this is a tapered cup so to keep uh to keep my pen aligned with it perfectly you adjust this and i'm looking at it i gotta stick my head where your point of view is there to align the metal to align the metal bar with the there we go with the foam cup surface and I'll bring this down this is the tool holder it is set up for holding pins right now a little permanent marker I'm gonna use the soft tip so I don't poke it through there and I'm actually gonna line it up with the uh, uh, image facing up and I'll show you why so let's get started. I'm going to show you my screen because I want you to see the whole process in this video. This is our website, by the way, if you want to go there and learn more about it. This is the software called the Cylindraw Control uh, Package. And it's, it's four different pieces of software. I'm going to start out by opening the Depixelizer. This is a vectorization uh, software. So you uh, import images or bitmaps like a photograph. In this case, I've got that little cup guy. I found him on YouTube. I was like, well, I just watched a video. I took a screenshot. So this is a really low quality image on the right. That's what I've input. And then on the left is the preview of the output. And I'll just show you kind of messing around here. There's, there's all kinds of little features in this in this software that you can play around with uh, to get the effect that you're looking for. For now, for a quick video, I want something close to this here. That looks that looks really good. And then now, let me let me adjust the camera again. This is a very important point to make here. Uh, so this is a cup. This is a cup. I'm going to show you that didn't go as planned. And this is drawing Inspector Gadget, and you can see. When I was trying to do the details in there, it was really, it was trying to draw features that were smaller than I could with the pen that I had. And that's because I had used Inkscape to convert the image into the vector paths that the pen would follow. And Inkscape is incredible. It's an incredible tool, but it doesn't have a way to compensate or consider what the diameter of the tool that you're using is. And that's what is, makes my software really cool because it does. So... Let's go back here. You're looking at that. So I'm going to choose my stroke here. I'm going to crank it up to 0.8 millimeters because I know that's what that pen will do. And then I want the end result to be, let's see, get my ruler out. It's about 80 millimeters. So I'm going to turn that down. And if you if I keep going, you can see it pixelates it. That's that's how it's compensating for the size. And I know that's going to turn out good. I'm going to hit export, poof, and it opens up this preview. This is an SVG file. 
uh, scalable vector graphics, but, but the, the SVGs that Depixelizer makes are not intended to be scaled. That's that's how it does its, ma its magic trick, and you'll see here. Let me just go to creation mode. Yes, I want to change, and it automatically uh, grabs the file that I just made. It, it just... It, I could, I could have exported that as, I could have named the file, saved it somewhere else special if I wanted to, uh, but it also automatically opens the most recent one, which is a handy dandy feature. So in here, in the job creator, I'm going to take an SVG, it could be a generic one from Inkscape, or it could be one that you've made with Depixelizer, and it imports that and it, it adjusts where it's going to end up on the cup, and it turns a vector into uh, a into machine readable code. So let's, I'm going to go to the dimensions. I'm going to measure my cup with my ruler, real casual like here, because it doesn't need to be perfect, but it does need to know so it compensates. So 85 big diameter, 55 small diameter, and 100 tall. 85, 55, and 100 tall. And you can see it's already grabbed the stroke thickness too that I had typed into the, the other program. So the 0.8, I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to hit this just to show you real quick, goblet mode. So you can do wine glasses too and you can adjust the height of where how that ends up looking, which is pretty neat. And I'm going to move it a little more centered and save it. It's real quick and then when it's done it opens up Cylindraw Viewer which is a uh, preview of the exact job that it will run. And it, this is optimized code right here. So it's gone through, it's sorted through the, the SVG, turned it in machine readable code, and then optimized the path that it will follow to minimize this stuff right here, the white, the wasted motion. It's very little. And I can look at this and I can say, hey, that looks great. I'm gonna exit that portion and then I'm going to go to run mode <clears throat> and you can see oh I forgot to connect my machine so Cylindraw is uh, connected to your computer with two cable or well, one cable for the computer so it's a USB serial connection and then 12 volt power supply there we go the cable's pretty tight there and it automatically, as soon as you plug it in, it says, hey, I found something. I found it. I know what I'm looking for. This software is designed to be really verbose. So it just, like, if it prints information. If it has it, here's the state. This is what's going on. So I, I, I think that's an important feature to have so you know what your machine is, is thinking. What do we got here? We're connected on this COM port. It gives you an estimate of how long the job's going to take. I can, hopefully this, oh, good, the window is in your view. Um, what do I want to do first? I'm going to home it. I want to get my order of operations correct. I'm going to home it. And the reason I care is because I have an image on there already. I want to draw on the exact opposite side. Cylindraw's zero axis is top dead center. So if I want to... There it is. Now I'm on the back. I'm going to update the speed before I get started to 60 millimeters a second. And you know, I'm going to do 65, actually. Go a little faster and play. And I can see that it's, uh, it's opening up a prompt. It says, hey, insert this color of pen. And it's picked up this black from the black that the image is loaded here. Even though I have a pink pen, it doesn't know that. But if the image had been multicolor, it would have it would have said insert the first order pin color that it finds and it actually finds the colors it, it inserts them automatically by brightness with the brightest first I'll show you let me just hit OK get to work uh, you want to start drawing with the brightest first because if you draw a bright color over a dark color then you can smear and it looks funny but this automatically considers that and does it for you um, I'm gonna open that's working. Un oh wait, I'm not viewer. Another thing of run mode. And it's smart enough to know, hey, this is two instances going on. I'm not going to mess up that instance. 
And I'll set this one. This is how you, not you, you go to calibration mode. And whenever you first, you or I, uh, whoever is assembling it, first assembles it, you want to do a series of tests in order to ensure that it's assembled correctly so that the machine uh, will operate the way it's supposed to and it won't crash or anything like that. So that's what these are. They're standardized tests. And I guess while I'm talking about that, this is this is a machine I'm going to offer as a kit in uh, assemble it yourself. You can. A lot of people out there like to DIY things like I do and, and build your own stuff. That's that's awesome. I'm going to make the STL files available for you. You can print those, and then you would buy the the vitamins that go with it from me, and then follow my instructions to assemble it yourself. And, uh, I think a lot of people would be interested in this who would, would not be interested in assembling it completely, so I'm going to also sell a fully assembled calibrated version as well uh, to make that available. Oh, and then I didn't show you, I saved the best for last. If, if you're, let's see, so I've got, I'm going to make sure, I'm going to check on my camera here. I'm balancing the camera. I'm going to go to this, come here, yeah. Go to this cut. I didn't want this video to be too long, so I'm trying to go fast here. There's a lot of info. Uh, the engraving portion, the, the, like this, is also also really cool. So we're going to use uh, the Dremel stylo, a standardized off-the-shelf professional piece of equipment. It's really quiet. Oop, it's not plugged in, so it's really really quiet. <laughs> but uh, a little magnetized shield here, and it just takes the place of that mount and operates the same way as you just saw. Uh, now, what's really cool about using an engraver for this function, I mean, like, here's here's the deal. This is something that you can buy, right? Like, you can buy engraved cups uh, right now. They're laser engraved. That's the standard uh, technology that people use uh, widely for this task. But laser engravers can be dangerous. They they have to be ventilated outside. Uh, they can start, they can catch on fire. They're like $5,000, and if you want to spend a dime less than that, then you're going to get it from China and have to follow some awful instructions and not get any support at all. That's That sucks. This machine was designed to do this task really easily and cheaply. It's it's an order of magnitude less expensive than a laser, and uh, and the, uh, the, op the the maintenance costs are far less, too. Like, this doesn't have, this is, doesn't have anything that breaks down on it. It just runs like a tank. So I think I think oh uh, when you're engraving as well it's also it's a it's a clean desktop style of task right so it doesn't not only does it not have to be ventilated outside you can just you can just kind of do it casually it's quiet and if you're doing glass you do want to ins use a vacuum right because that makes really tiny particles so you just kind of do that and you know boom safe and I think. I think I've covered the ground that I wanted to cover and show you, give you a real good idea of how this does what it does. I'm poof. And you hear that beep. I like the beeping. It keeps you informed of what the machine is doing. If you need to change pin or whatever, you can turn the beeping off too. And I think I'm going to end my video right there. Thanks for watching.